beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. it is a piece of my secret place let it rise like an offering to you For this is the way you follow me Lord, I love the way you follow me You are the reason, the reason I live You are the song, the song that I sing You're my song in the night You're my melody in the day It's a piece of my worship, my secret place, my secret place, my secret place. It's an overflow of my secret place. Your Majesty, I will go on and on. I will go on and on, bringing you the worship you deserve. I will go on and on Yes, on and on You deserve my worship I will go on and on And on and on Brothers and sisters, I'm teaching you how to dig into ancient fountains of power this is how to dig into the wells of grace. This is how to dig into the wells of freshness in the spirit. His majesty. <laughs> hey, His majesty. Don't think I'm wasting your time. Your majesty. Your majesty. This is how the songs come in the spirit. Melodies that were not composed. Falling like the dew of heaven. Oh, may he put a song in your mouth. He says, you put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise. Many will see and hear and put their trust in him. I tell you I can go on and on if this is all I do tonight it's worth it for my king because as I sing then he steps into my life then he steps into my situation then he steps into my finances I authorize him through my worship I attract him as I invoke his presence in worship I 
I lift him above my challenges. When I worship him, I magnify him. something what i'm teaching you tonight what you are doing is an ancient mystery is how mighty men tap into deep fountains of power you may not some of you may think we're just wasting time i'm sharing with you a piece of my secret place ancient fountains i tell you if, if you keep going like this you stretch it one hour two hours you will touch a fountain in the spirit that everyone will know you touch something. The problem is we don't stay long enough. Every time his presence starts coming, flesh starts telling us time is going. When you bring time into the equation, you ruin his presence because it's eternity invading time. He does not come into your, your presence on your terms. He comes in on his terms. That's where we miss it. We don't stay long enough until the glory rubs up on us when the glory comes flesh starts distracting us and we think we are wasting time because we do not know what happens when we worship he fights your battles your worship is a language it lifts up your pain before god it lifts up your challenges before god your worship is a language it lifts up your request before god you don't need to mention it don't let the devil say you must mention it no it's an ancient mystery it's the mystery of prayer and supplication you sing out your pain you sing out your tears you sing out your mountains and as you sing them those mountains collide with his majesty they collide with power your majesty it's your majesty learn it Learn it. It's your majesty. When God releases his glory upon the people, don't be too quick to allow the glory lift. It's your majesty. It's your majesty. Yeah. We declare your majesty. Take 
It's your majesty, majesty, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your manifested presence. Please sit down if you can. The seat is not comfortable. Just take whatever position. God is already doing a lot of things. Let me tell you, there is a heavy spirit of prophecy in this place. Heavy spirit of prophecy. That's why I kept singing. Because I began to sense, I began to sense the spirit of prophecy. And, and we must sing it to come. Oh, let it come, let it come, oh God. Let it come. Is the mystery with which we will know what predates our age. We will not stop it. Let it come. We need to be made mighty men and women. Let it come. Let it come. Let the spirit of prophecy. Let it fall upon us. Inside and outside. Everywhere. Let the spirit of prophecy fall. Open our eyes. Oh God. Okay, so God, open our ears to hear the shofar of the Spirit. It's your majesty. Listen. See, let me teach you something. Listen. The presence of God is, is always around. But there are certain times your worship touches a dimension of him. You must be helped and please. You must be sensitive enough to know when he comes in. We are not a religious people. If this is all we do tonight, because there are men who came here hungry. There are times God just brings in a level of grace. Both of you lift your hands. Lift your hands, both of you. Take it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Shake Alaba. Your majesty, it's your majesty, your majesty, it's your majesty. Please lift up your hands Whether you are sitting or standing Just lift your hands Lift your hands. Lord, I pray that dimension your people have longed for. Right now I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Take men into realms in the spirit. I command it in the name of Jesus. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Let the hunger of men be met right now. Let there be a rain. Blow, oh thou wind of the spirit. Blow and separate men. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I open you up to angelic encounters. Encounters.
encounters of angels encounters of power ancient dimensions of the ancient dimensions of prophecy I unlock fountains let the east gate be open in the name of Jesus let the east gate be open and let the wind blow new levels of grace new levels of power let the call of fire rest upon your tongue let the call of fire rest upon your let the call of fire rest upon your tongue this is how you become mighty you must learn to be sensitive don't get too organized that you do not know when God steps in don't get too mechanical he knows you need to be healed he knows you need Rema but let me tell you when he comes he upgrades you he upgrades you in the spirit what is happening to us is a promotion in the spirit is how God increases the ranking of men in the spirit go ahead and pray in tongues let's just pray in tongues for a while come on men of prayer where you are just begin to pray so that that which you have received will sink into your mind Activate that which you have received. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the dimensions of grace. Increase the weight of your presence. Increase the weight of your glory upon our lives. We want to be envoys of your power, envoys of your grace. Listen, this is koinonia. This is koinonia. It's not the name of a meeting. It's an experience. It's not a Sunday worship service. This is koinonia. All the men you see and admire, both around and in this ministry, this is how they were trained. This is how they were built. It's a spiritual drilling that will make you mighty. It's a spiritual drilling that will open you up to fountains of grace. This is how your prayer for power will be answered. This is prayer for spiritual influence will be answered. Just worship some more. Don't be tired. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. It's your majesty. Your majesty. It's your majesty. Majesty. 
Obadiah Obadiah chapter 1 You are catching fire tonight. Obadiah 1 verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the mount of Esau and as a result of their ministry the kingdom shall be the Lord it says saviors shall come out saviors this strange species of men and women this strange dimension of beings ordinary men doing the words of God men who are not limited by anything they have sustained a strategy in the spirit that keeps them victorious in the earth realm. He said, but time will not fail me to talk about Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, shut the mouth of lions. He said, women who received their dead back to life. You are writing your own history. Your sacrifice is giving you access to touch what the ancient touched. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. You see koinonia is is a collection of all kinds of people and god does not want to leave anyone's life to chance some of you watching me you will be the ones doing what i'm doing one day you see that so god is preparing you if except you don't want the anointing except you want to join the bands of liars and noisemakers but if it is true grace you want there is no shortcut to it i'm telling you this is how it happens. This is how it happens. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. Be seated if you can. Don't worry, just leave all those. You can't sit. Just find somewhere. Sit on the floor. Just do whatever you want to do. Let me just establish a few things and then we will close. I come against everything I come against every force and every foul spirit I know what I'm seeing in the spirit I come against every spirit I come against every spirit I come against every spirit I change every prophecy that lingers upon the head of anyone that is not of God I come with the rod of a higher priesthood in the name that is above all names I declare that the enchantment of men the wickedness of men the scourging tongues men who have sworn by the sky sworn by the stars and the constellations to manipulate the destinies of men I bring into alignment in the name of Jesus I speak by an apostolic voice tonight I challenge the constellations and I command them to release the destinies of men the binary of the order of the heavens I command in the name of Jesus that every arrangement that has been sworn and has been as a result of that bringing men into failure poverty spiritual backwardness I challenge those powers from the second heavens I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant I open those gates I open those doors I open those dimensions 
in the name of Jesus. Things that have been manipulated, visions that have been corrupted, experiences that have been aberrated. I plead for purity to your dreams, to your visions, to your spiritual experiences. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Oh, see. Just be sensitive to what God is doing. It will be for a few minutes and we'll round up. There may not be room to do any serious teaching because. I began to sense this right from home I began to sense that it was tonight was a time of activations just activations and let me tell you it is very important for a ministry that as we begin to teach have miracle services there are services that are special impartation services this is one of such just impartations raw impartations of the spirit it is part of the ministry of the word look you need grace i'm telling you you need it you need the anointing i said it last week the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the anointing is the difference between failure and success the anointing is the difference between your current cgpa and where you need to get to the anointing is it you will struggle for nothing but the anointing so don't you think what is happening is just power to heal the sick the anointing is the difference between you and that joblessness the anointing when the principles have been taught and you understand the principles when your obedience has been perfected you need an agency that forces compliance in the spirit the name of that agency is the anointing we live in a wicked world where there are all kinds of assaults of darkness it is through the greatness of thy power that your enemies will submit themselves recurrent sicknesses it comes and goes comes and goes brother you need the anointing i tell you all kinds of manipulation of darkness in the dream eating all kinds of nonsense hearing all kinds of sounds the anointing does not make the difference it is please learn this it is the difference it is the difference you can do ministry listen to men of god and get their tapes and copy what they are saying you will never see the result until you pass through this process it is the anointing that gives life to your words it's not about speaking it's not just about rema you can hear what somebody said you can get a koinonia message preach word for word it will not produce the effect because the anointing how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about his academics he went about the business he went about the ministry the anointing is what will separate you marriage will not just come because you are beautiful no 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 the anointing it says because of the ointment do the virgins love thee because of the ointment not because of your looks sons of solomon he said because of the ointment there is an aura esther began to anoint herself with a kind of oil for one year and ahasuerus picked her as queen it is the anointing that is the difference they can call anybody for a job it is the anointing that separates you please respect the operation of the anointing don't let men just tell you that you will keep doing everything you are doing and it will never work until there is the anointing koinonia is nothing without the anointing you can print all the posters you can print all the banners you can but the anointing your life is grossly deficient and you see jesus was given the anointing without measure and we are all attaining there 
but it doesn't mean you have the anointing without measure it's not true i've had preachers preach that you have the anointing without it's not true brothers and sisters for there is a progression in the spirit and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and he watched my response to that dimension of operation after a while he increased it again boundaries can be enlarged in the spirit all of us are not functioning at the same realm that's why you can do what everybody is doing but your results are different it is the anointing it is the anointing you can collect the mic with a beautiful voice and sing but it is the anointing he said they were caught to the heart as Peter began to speak have you read the message in Acts chapter 3 it's not the kind of message you preach in a crusade but the anointing made the difference I treasure the anointing and I treasure the custodian of that anointing that's why we honor the ministry of the spirit let me tell you when you are anointed you are anointed the worst that can happen is you can be criticized but no man can doubt the finger of God he said if it is bad no kingdom divided against itself will stand right he said if I by the finger of God do this the anointing please pray in one minute where you are and say Lord let it come like the dew of heaven upon my life the anointing I don't know how else to teach you this you must desire the anointing The anointing will bring favor to your life. I'm telling you, in one day, it will open doors of prosperity you never imagined. You don't need to know nobody, I'm telling you. The anointing can bring peace to that family. It can bring peace. The anointing can bring peace. Hallelujah. Listen, there are many of us we have been able to take steps from the teachings that have been coming here but for many of us the missing ingredient is that anointing samson with the anointing did mighty things when when what's the name of that lady when delilah came delilah was attacking the all she was concerned about was the anointing are you getting my point Delilah had no business whether Samson was strong. No, 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 no. She said, what is the source of your strength? Tell me. That's all I want to know. Not when are you going to marry me? Not when will you take me to Chicken Republic? I want to know. How come you are a man who is so slim, yet you remove gates, yet you use jaw bones to do mighty things? What is the secret? And Samson kept it. The anointing was hidden in his hair right according to the prophecy that was given there was a spiritual code that governed the operation of the anointing and he was told to protect it as a nazarene he would not cut his hair the spirit of the antichrist walked in delilah to keep luring him and samson said do this and that and she cried and said samson all she was after was the anointing that's why the devil is called antichrist the one who fights the anointing He fights the anointing he uses all kinds of things to fight the anointing blackmails to fight the anointing your past failures all he's attacking is the anointing because when you lose the anointing you've lost it all. and she shaved the head of samson samson the philistines are after you he got up they didn't tear any part of his body but the anointing left and he was as weak as any ordinary man and then they removed his eyes immediately and samson began to be a slave the only thing that came back to samson's life was the anointing when they went and samson stood and began to ask god for mercy they kept samson the anointing was being mocked by a dagon a god and they said you who has troubled the philistines 
But Samson said, Oh Lord. And while in minutes the hair began to grow, they didn't know. They didn't notice it. They were dancing. And when the hair came suddenly, the anointing came. Brothers and sisters, when the anointing is on your life, the result is instant. 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 The day you start preaching with the anointing, everybody will know. You don't need to tell everybody, call me pastor. They will call you ministers of our God when they see the anointing. You don't need to tell anybody, I'm a, I'm a great businessman. Let the anointing come. The anointing. Please pray in one minute. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Say, Lord, I need the anointing in my life. I need the anointing in my life. For those of us who have seen a measure or so of the anointing, say, Lord, increase my boundaries in the spirit. <laughs> Stretch the boundaries, so God, in the spirit. Activate new possibilities in my life by the agency of the anointing. Let me lead by the anointing. Let me ride that jam by the anointing. Let me ride that wayek by the anointing. Let me write the exam by the anointing. Let me do my office activities by the anointing. Let me preach. Let me run this ministry by the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have just about an hour or so and then we're done. Let me see how we can just touch whatever we can touch. We're supposed to start a new series tonight and um, there is a special teaching on the anointing. I already sense that there are fountains that in the days to come we're going to touch in the spirit. Hallelujah. So all of the teachings have been preparations towards it and um, I hope we will be able to touch it. We'll just do a two-part series I think just reduce it to a two-part series and touch whatever we touch then eventually we'll continue maybe by next month hallelujah oh i love the lord i love the lord we're taking a series called the imagines the imagines it's a series that seek to Revealed to us God's prophetic operation in the nations and in the continent of Africa right now. In this series, we're going to be exploring what God is currently doing now. We will unveil the plot of darkness that looms upon the nation. There are all kinds of terrorist groups arising. Right? Rebellion across the states. What, what is happening? These things are prophetic writings on the wall. And we need to understand and begin to see these things from the lens of prophecy. The imagines. So the first part of it is going to be talking about the prophecy. The prophecy that is upon God's people. The prophecy that is upon our nation. The prophecy that is upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this end time. And then I will also be touching on the making of reformers is the part one. That's what we'll be doing today. I will show you the spiritual system with which God makes men. How men are made in the spirit. How an ordinary man can become a man of power and stature in the spirit. Hallelujah. Then the next part of the series will be talking about the strategy. The ecclesia of God. God's strategy for this coming apostolic invasion. The Bible says nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And so we need to be prepared on how to align ourselves. Thank you, Jesus.
God has always had a system. There has been a prophecy. Listen to me, please. I want you to know that we are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. Hallelujah. The signs that the Bible begins to give that will happen are already happening. Look at what is happening in America. Look at what is happening in the Middle East. Down the Sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria. Darkness looms across the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. The pride of kings have been humbled in these seasons. Economies are melting down. Several things are happening across the territories of the nations. And God did not leave us in the dark. Hallelujah. He said, for behold, darkness covers the earth. And gross darkness, the people. That was a reality that would happen at a particular point in history. And this is that time when darkness is covering the earth. There are all kinds of perversions. Right? The speakings of the beast. The Antichrist, both as a system and as an entity. I had a lot to talk about tonight, but I hope that the emergence, the occultic societies, the Freemasons, the Illuminatis, these fraternities that are a symbol of rebellion, they have marked their presence across the entire strata of human activities, from the economy to the media to music. Watch this, please. But in this last day, because the system of the Antichrist also has its mode of operation. Are you getting my point now? The system of the Antichrist is the system that will usher in the presence of that figure. Not just a, as a system. And listen to me. There is a secret rebuilding of the Tower of Babel going on in the nations right now. Genesis 11 begins to tell us that a man under the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist called Nimrod, the son of Cush, he began to mobilize men to build a city that did not honor God. That city is being rebuilt again. Hallelujah. The governmental policies that are being put, the ideologies according to Revelation 13 and when you read so on and so forth the speakings of the beast remember what John saw John said he saw a lamb with horns and he was about to bow to that lamb remember and about to bow when the lamb spoke he saw a lamb but he had the voice of a dragon and immediately he said this is not the lamb that was what John saw right a mixing of the truth looks like the lamb talk like the lamb or acted like the lamb but his mouth began to betray and when john listened he said uh -uh, because my sheep hear my voice and he said this is not the voice of the lamb this is the voice of a dragon so there is a secret rebuilding of the tower of babel this this antichrist system you've heard a lot about the illuminati and their agenda and we all laugh and just think it's a figment of imagination. But let me tell you something. It is, it is the strategy of the devil masquerading itself in secrecy. But in these days, there is an open show of darkness. It's no longer a hidden thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It used to be a secret fraternity of the elite. And so occasionally by divination, they see through the vistas of time. And they handpick potential people across music across the arts and entertainment across business and so they come to you with a proposal to manipulate things according to their will you become a benefactor when you sell your soul to the devil mystery babylon the ancient secret of initiation that brings men into fraternity with a system that is godless hallelujah and it is all the composition of the systems. And so they went on with every kind of demonic manipulation. Let me tell you something. I've said it again and again. I have an apostolic call. I'm not a pastor. And so I'm not one of those who will sugarcoat a lot of things. No, no. Listen. I tell you the truth. Aside from the war between Israel and the world. 
every word that is happening in this earth is a big drama theater and performing arts that's what is going on a secret manipulation of darkness please are you hearing what i'm saying i told you that the owner of i think it was mtv was asked and he said how come you have so much influence on the little children i think of ages 8 to 16 or thereabout and he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them we have developed a structure already that grows with them right and so they have invaded everything most of these organizations you celebrate are all fraternities of darkness they have signed their allegiance let me tell you satan is called the god of this world have you been told is it not in your bible the bible says he took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glories of this world and said if you bow that's the only condition bow means sell your soul bow means prove that you are not equal with god and i will give you and watch this i began to explore especially the music industry very intricately i don't know why the attention of darkness has moved very closely to music right the highest advocates of the illuminati are businessmen and musicians right please listen to me very important i'm showing you the structure we're going to talk about the emergence i hope is the I'm, I'm talking about the prophecy now darkness the word darkness there does not necessarily just mean like absence of light sunlight a system and remember the bible calls certain classes of spirits rulers of darkness that means their dominion is magnified when there is no light they are not called rulers of light rulers of darkness and so they have controlled the economy of nations they have controlled everything almost all the music artists that have been killed right all of those people you you used to know are people who at one point or the other started violating their allegiance because they looked and they found out that this is a system of injustice a system of darkness and any attempt to revolt will cost you your life please listen to me i have seen many things i'm not one of those who stands on stage and begins to prophesy national and all of that but let me tell you on the strength of my secret place the lord has shown me many things and one of the things that will begin to happen upon the nations of the earth is an open show of evil it's it they they have masqueraded it until they built sufficient structures now they are removing the mask and saying we are the ones make no confusion about it we are the ones that control your economy we are the ones that control your educational system we are the ones that control what your children watch we can manipulate technology i thought we'll have time today i would have shown you a few documentaries that will shock you maybe next week we'll do that right and you will be shocked to see the extent to which this antichrist system is already building the system of babylon taking anything that looks like god out there are two things that are of concern to me number one is what we call the demonic doctrine of universalism let me explain to you what that means look up please the teaching that every religion is an aspect of god are you hearing what i'm saying that is just different sides of seeing the same thing have you been taught that so there are all kinds of christian sects especially occultic sects branching out pseudo christian sects and they have one mission to be able to market this doctrine of in quote love and universalism that means it doesn't matter there are different ways to get to god rather than criticizing me find my similarity with you so that we become friends are you seeing that now it is the same spirit of acts chapter 16 when a lady who was with the spirit of divination when paul entered the city what happened she started looking for the areas of similarity 
He's fivefold. I am fivefold. He said, These are mighty men. Why? So that if Paul preaches for three days or one week and goes out, people will say, You are the friend of Paul. So we will listen to you. The system of darkness. Eating people up. I've said it again and again. I, I, I pray so much, especially for our little children who are growing because the system was well designed. This is not something that started 10 years ago, 20 years, 100 years. No. It's a strategy by the devil. Right? They worked with demons to manufacture AIDS. They worked with demons to manufacture cancer. They worked with demons to bring Ebola. They are, they are a deceitful people. They claim they love Africa. They claim they love the nations. They have sold their souls to the devil. There is no iota of love in them. They stand and tell lies because they own the televisions that give the news. They own the papers that bring the news. Are you ready for tonight's teaching? Hmm. And right now, there is no hiding again. They are already beginning to come one by one. Opening up the fact that the fraternity of darkness they are involved with is the source of their strength. They have acquired all the money. They have acquired all the fame and everything. And they are now manipulating people. But the, another point, I told you that the point of concern is this music. Why, why is the attention of darkness so much on music? I will tell you why. I began to find out that it was an ancient mystery. That every time it was time to bow to a king or a deity, music will precede that homage please are you hearing what i'm saying this is a this is i pray that you'll get what i'm saying it was the custom of kings in ancient times they would stand upon the pinnacle of their temples and so they will now say all hail the king and there will be shofars that will be blown right and at the sounding of that shofar the entire nation will bow if it was a graven image they would do the same thing was that not what happened in the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You remember? They told them that music will be played. The moment you hear that music, know that it is now time. What follows that is a bowing. And that's the same thing that is happening. So the devil is already using the weapon of music to force men to bow to this God of gold. That stature called the Antichrist. Let me tell you something. I'm already seeing the formation of the government of the Antichrist upon the earth. It's not something that will happen in one day or 10 years or 20 years, but it is a formation. There is already a formation of that godless system. And if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not arise to sustain the strategy from the spirit, to be able to raise a standard, then very soon we are going to be victims. So there is an emergence. Because the Bible told us the moment you see darkness covering the earth, at the same time, coincidentally, the army is rising. See that? So it's a teaching that prepares us, revealing to us that every day brings us into the reality of prophecy. Every day. Everything that happens across the nation is right now prophetic. Politicians understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy individuals understand right now that they are in the middle of prophecy did you know that koinonia you're coming here they are all interwoven in the prophecies of this book we may never know you may not find a place in this book written joshua selman or your name but it is all part of the prophetic agenda of god whether you believe it or not jesus is coming soon let me repeat myself. Whether you believe it or not, I'm announcing to you that Jesus is coming soon. Gullible preachers prefer talking about money than that, but I am telling you, Jesus is coming soon. Say amen. He's coming soon. But before he's coming, he gave us an assurance that there will be a global awakening. There will be an arising and imagine a clash of kingdoms. So there is a prophecy that is upon the world 
that the knowledge of evil, the rage of evil will increase. The fierceness of wickedness will begin to multiply because the spirits that have been kept until this season, as they are released from the pit of darkness, they come with fierce anger. The Bible says Satan has fallen upon the earth with great fury because he knows his time is short. There, is, there are unleashings of arsenals of darkness and the church and the anointing is the target. So marriages right now are under attack. Right? Marriage is under attack. All kinds of things happening. The devil is coming with all sorts of strategies and gimmicks. But there is a generation that will call him a liar. And we are that generation in the name of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, there is a prophecy upon us. Over there, 121, we read it. That saviors will arise out of Zion the city the place of God the place where they have been built and trained and prepared saviors shall arise and he said they will judge the mount of Esau that rebellious entity that system the antichrist system is called many things in the bible Jezebel the dragon Babylon Egypt they are all an expression of one and the same government Running from Genesis to Revelation. That city of rebellion. Hallelujah. But it's not enough for the church to know that there is a prophecy upon us. That we have a prophetic destiny. We must understand that there is a system with which God will build and make men. And around three. One great woman that uh, I've, I've read a bit of her her you know her books and her encounters with Jesus Christ she began to talk about the coming revival I read a lot about revivals both past and present and the revivals to come I began to read about how she said that Jesus appeared unto her she had encounters with Jesus for like a year true genuine encounters and in that encounter he began to reveal to her about the coming revival and she was granted access to see the dealings and the preparations of the spirit and the way the inhabitants of the earth the church the ecclesia god's system of victory will be built and equipped hallelujah so there is a prophecy upon us say there is a prophecy upon my life say one more time there is a prophecy upon my life you must believe that you are not ordinary listen you're coming to koinonia whether you are inside or outside everything that is happening is leading you towards prophecy it may not look like it you came for koinonia with pains you came to zaria maybe as a student or you came to zaria maybe to serve or you came to zaria because you got a job or marriage brought you you in the midst of all of these confusions i want you to know that there is a line of prophecy there is something happening in your life that is bringing you towards prophecy praise the lord and it's important for us to know that but then how does god make men because it's not enough to just know that there are there are reformers and revivalists the making of reformers what is the spiritual process this will explain to some of us the happenings in our lives right now and it will help and encourage us to stay true as God is working on us. Hallelujah. When the Lord began to show me this, my eyes were opened and I said, my goodness, can you imagine? First Peter chapter 4 verse 12, please. Are you there? Everyone read is projected. One to read. Beloved, think it not what? Hold on. That means don't think it is a surprise to you. Don't, don't act as though it were something strange. He said, think it not strange concerning the what? Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what the Bible is saying. I'm showing you the process. The mystery of the furnace of affliction. That furnace with which God makes men mighty. Please listen to me. God is ministering to us right now. 
There is no making of a champion without a process that will require pain, discipline, pruning, and alignment. Please don't forget this. There is no champion. I said it, I think it was last week or the week before last. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. No man of God just happens to be anointed by mistake. There's no such thing as that. No one just carries the glory of God by mistake. I want you to know that there is a spiritual pathway to accessing true power, to accessing relevance and strength in the spirit. To be a steward of God's finances, to be a steward of God's glory, to be a steward of God's grace. Very important. And one of that mystery is the mystery of the fullness of affliction. You may not like what it, this is, but I want you to listen to me very carefully. The fullness of affliction. It was Job that began to speak to us. And he began to communicate his, the tragedy that came upon his life. Hallelujah. It was Paul that began to speak to us about a thorn in his flesh. It was Moses and all of these people, Joseph, that went through certain things. Listen to me, please. Tonight, I want to change your understanding and your interpretation of affliction and trials. Now, I know that I've done a teaching on that. I think spiritual timings are there about. You can listen to it. There are certain things that happen to men that are orchestrated by darkness. I personally do not believe that God willingly takes evil or darkness or trials or this and puts upon people. However, I believe that according to the system of his wisdom and sovereignty, he is able to take advantage of situations in our lives and orchestrate that through them, they are used as schoolmasters to prune and bring us to a point of stature and strength and relevance and usefulness in the spirit. I believe that. Absolutely. I don't know how many other people got their anointing and their grace. But let me tell you, there is no spiritual champion. There is no principality in the kingdom that did not go through the mystery of the fullness of affliction. You must understand this. You don't have to pray against it. There's nothing to bind there. Are you getting my point? The only thing that happens for you or happens in your life at that point is grace, the sustaining power of the spirit to go through it and finish well. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name, you are mine. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He said, through the river, it shall not overwhelm you. But he said, when you walk through the fire, not run through it. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. When you walk through the fire, listen to me. It's very important. The way they make the anointing in Israel, they still do that. I have, I have, I have anointing oil straight from Israel with, with mar, spikenard, and all of these things that were used. Ancient ingredients, the, the, the spices that were originally used. It smells the exact requirement, the ingredients God gave. I have, I have a um, a bottle of, of, of anointing oil like that and every time I just put a little of that on my hand I keep looking at it and the fragrance is nice, the smell but then I studied a bit on how they make that olive they have what they call a crushing stone, right? and they take that olive and they pour it there and they put a heavy stone upon it and they start turning round and it puts pressure and it begins to crush that olive. And as it crushes the olive, it begins to squeeze out the oil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is that way that God will make you become a man of true power. Afflictions are not there to kill us. The fullness of affliction reveals the spiritual system that brings us to the point of obedience. Jesus said he learned obedience by the things he suffered he learned it it was not an impartation he learned obedience there were orchestrations in his life that compelled him to walk in obedience you will not align yourself to spiritual things just by default 
there is an operation of the spirit there are happenings and orchestrations around your life that are aimed at bringing you to a point where you begin to see from god's perspective and if you do not know that this is a pathway to carrying grace you will run and allow the devil mock god in your presence say after me god forbid hallelujah the first thing i want you to know about challenges that is that number one affliction and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith let me deliver somebody right away there are many of us who are going through all kinds of situations right now from finance to your health to maybe marriage to whatever it is and we have been made to think that the entire reason why everything is happening to us is because of lack of faith let me tell you something i have learned by experience especially for students it's not every student who is suffering in class that is as a result of childlessness or laziness it's easy to conclude that people and look at them and say your cgp is on one point something you know it's a terrible thing you are an embarrassment to redemption however it may not be everybody but let me tell you there are a few people that they, there is a strange pathway in the spirit that they are taking that is taking them to where they themselves do not know just follow me there are many families that may not understand why in spite of their righteousness and their love for god they are tithing and giving and they are committed to spiritual things it looks like there are certain orchestrations that just seem to draw them back it's like a a cycle of woes and pain i'm telling you this that there are dimensions of the dealings of the spirit that are not demonic it is called the mystery of the fullness of affliction this, this teaching is not for babes. It's not just receive, receive. It, because I'm explaining to some of you the mystery behind what is happening in your life. In spite of your prayer, you hear God about everything but not that situation. And God looks silent. Lord, what is all this? And it looks like you receive a prophetic word for others, but for you, you have fasted for one week at the end of the prayer. All the scriptures you had were about comfort. I want you to know that there is a school you are passing through, and what you are receiving is a lecture. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Moses did not know why he ran away, and for 40 years, there were certain processes he was going through he did not understand until the god of israel called him and told him that he there was a prophecy upon his life prophecies do not just manifest just because you love god there is a pathway it may not be for everybody but everyone who truly wants to be used by god goes through this pathway the fullness of affliction like a blacksmith right that melts metals to remove their impurities and now begins to carve them there are several um expressions in the bible that are used to describe this process the potter and the clay the blacksmith there are all kinds of processes the bible begins to tell us about the potter and the clay how that he picks up the clay smashes it right and now begins to mold it into fashion The fullness of affliction is a is a pathway in the spirit is the root that leads you to galatians 2 20 that realm called i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life that i live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for you come to a point where you have no life in your own. Your ego is stung until there is nothing to sting it again. There are all kinds of things that happen to you. I want you to know that there are people sitting right now, right here, that are going through that pathway in the spirit. You prayed and you said, God, use me. Anoint me and make me mighty. And God said, Amen to that prayer. You just did not know that what is happening to you is amen to your prayer. Lord, make me that multi-billionaire businessman. I will advocate for the kingdom. And God said, amen. It's just that we have not been taught how God answers our prayers. 
we have only been taught that result is the only proof that God has answered your prayer. But let me tell you, when you begin to mature in the things of the Spirit, the fullness of affliction can be an answer to your greatest prayer. Is God speaking to us? So number one, afflictions and trials are not necessarily an indication of lack of faith. Please look at me. Many of you have been fasting and have been saying, Lord, I don't have faith. I don't have faith. We taught on faith, I think it was last week or, or week after last. Many of us have been taught, if you pray about something and it does not happen, you never had faith. If you had faith, it would have happened. Let me tell you, I honor and I respect those teachings, but it depends on the dimension you are standing in the spirit for you to be able to say some things. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not every affliction is as a result of lack of faith. There are men who you are going through the fire right now because you have faith. That's the reason why you are going through it. I feel God is ministering to people. Hallelujah. You stand on that board and you see what you did not want to see. And tears rolling down your eyes, you say, Lord, you are faithful. And other people look at you and say, when will you stop your laziness? There's no need trying to explain to them. It's a pathway you don't go in group. You go alone. It's a lonely road. No matter how men love you, when you get to the end of that road, they must leave you. You can be in a relationship with your darling and sweetheart. You will part ways. Are you getting one? The fullness of affliction is customized with your name on it. Nobody can help you to take the fire out of love. You know that thing they used to say, Mba Keba Serija. No way. It doesn't work when you are passing through the fullness of affliction. You pass alone. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number two, your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. Your tears and your expressions of pain and do not necessarily reflect unbelief. You must learn this. There are so many people who have been stopped from crying in the church. Why are you crying? Rejoice. Look, let me tell you. It's not every seed you sow crying. There is he that weepeth hearing precious seeds it's not everything in life that happens with joy please are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man fool you there are things that will happen in your life no matter how anointed you are it will bring tears out of your eyes tears and expressions of pain are not a sign of unbelief learn this and jesus wept the bible didn't say and he wept he mentioned the name of the person who cried and your Jesus wept. It's alright to cry and express pain. You get to a point in your life where it overwhelms you. There are times that lack of finances will eat you up. And you stand and you are saying, I can follow one allergy somewhere and be blessed. But I love God and I stay. But the truth is, the reality at the moment is that there is no food. It's not like somebody is bringing food in the evening. There's nobody that is sending you money anywhere. The fullness of affliction. The place where mighty men are made. That's, that's where reformers emerge. For David, it was the cave of Adullam. He ran and he stayed there. On asylum, he ran away. Ran away from civilization. And he hid there. It was the place where he was made. The wilderness was one place where he was made again. You see it all through scriptures that men were separated in unpleasant places. Read your Bible and see prophets who God made to sleep on one side of the bed. Have you read that? Read of prophets that God made to mix animal dung. Read of prophets who were made to marry prostitutes. After suffering to keep themselves for decades, God said, the nature of my dealing with you will necessitate you marrying a prostitute. So long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know that many of you may not appreciate this teaching. But this is the kind of teaching that will make you powerful. Hallelujah. 
mysteriously at a point in my life i've shared my story when i was diagnosed with a fungal infection i prayed every prayer i know how to pray let me tell you if you say i didn't have faith you are joking i had the the whole faith in the world they took me from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital took samples of my head i became an object of experiment in that darkness i began to feel the pain of what it means to have an seemingly it was they couldn't find out what was wrong that's the painful part i've shared with you the story my mom has been here when she had to use iron sponge what you use to scrub the back of your pot huh? that's what was used on my head it's called the furnace of affliction that's why when some people come out of that furnace nothing moves them again you just shout and they are looking at you after i went see look let me a sign let me tell you a proof that you are passing through that what made you cry yesterday makes you laugh today you think about it somebody just says are you going to sleep with me as before for the money and you laugh they carry your money and go and they say there's no food and you say lord i give you glory you sit down in the midst of fire and you lie down and sleep you and the fire have become one the bible says you walk through it are you hearing what i'm saying a time comes in the furnace of affliction where all your fears happen to you and there is nothing to fear again the fear of lack of membership happened the fear of lack of money happened the fear of the carryover happened at the end of it when you say god you are faithful there is no strings attached you suspected the relationship would break yes it broke but in all you have learned to be strong look let me tell you that that's the secret of courage you see some men go as if the devil even the devil doesn't know how to disturb them again because he doesn't know which part of their life he will touch satan satan is not a fool i've taught you this he will touch your finances and see your reaction if you do audition he won't touch it again because it means it doesn't matter to you then he will touch your health there is an aspect of your life you will touch the way you will react the devil will sing praise and worship and dance around and say i found it i found it for many of us every party touches you shout and so god says no you are a babe you may be the president of your ministry but that furnace of affliction touches every area of your life until you become dead a dead man doesn't have feelings again so they just call you and say mr man your car had a ghastly motor accident and you laugh you say please can i can we continue what we are discussing and people say it's like you didn't hear me your 2.5 million car just crashed you say lord i give you praise let's continue the fullness of affliction has done something to you you are not a pure human being again something spiritual has altered your humanity it has made you strong are you hearing what i'm saying absolutely this is the kind of fullness of affliction that can make women to carry their dead children they say madam your child just died and they look and tears are coming out of their eyes and they are saying lord you are faithful when is the burial date and you are saying what sort of insensitive person no 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 the opposite of what i'm telling you is excessive emotionalism and that's what the, the system of darkness is doing so people send every picture on facebook and twitter you are angry you you snap yourself and say i'm angry and then five minutes later you eat and say now yam has come you see that that bad attitude is as a result of lack of the fullness of affliction there is a way you are built they look at you and they say after next week they are coming to pack up your ministry and you laugh say, my god is faithful you become unperturbed you are not touched by anything may god take us to that realm if you don't get to that realm worry alone will kill you are you hearing what i'm saying if you do not get to that realm i guarantee you worry will kill you have you seen men who just sit down on their veranda and die have you seen people like that they just sit down bring me a stool and they sit down and die a man will go to a mango tree and 
put rope by himself. Right? And put the rope from under up and hang himself. Ready? Go and lift the rope and hang himself on a tree. The fullness of affliction makes you a spiritual man. Please hear me. It makes you a true spiritual man. If you have never cried, you have not gone through the furnace of affliction. I guarantee you, you have been passing through AC and the rest. The furnace of affliction will bring tears in your eyes. You will sit down one day and the whole world will change. You, you will not find value in anything. One day you will sit down and you will look at your lecturer. As he's teaching, you are thinking as if you are 70 years old. You are just thinking about life. When that happens to you, you are going through a fullness of affliction. You sit down in the office and they even call your name and you cannot answer again. Not because you are depressed, you are thinking about life. You come to a point where nothing else makes meaning to you except His Majesty. Is God speaking to us? As a man of God, you come to a point where five months, nobody, you are praying and fasting and it's during that time, no invitation no honorarium right at that time you come to your fellowship and you find three people your sister your uncle the other guy who is coming to beg you those are the three people that are around yet you are making tremendous progress in the spirit and you do not understand the fullness of affliction you stand to preach the generator spoils everything scatters your ego has been stung. On top of that, you pray for somebody who is sick and the person doesn't get healed. And they say, Pastor, I, this thing you are teaching us, we are not getting it. You come to a point where you just play songs, you play hymns and you just sit down. Everything. Remember all those country music. This world is not my home. You just sit down. People say, why? I, I mean, life doesn't make sense. Hear me. Don't just laugh. It's the fullness of affliction. Don't think it's happening because of lack of faith. If no one has taught you, rejoice when you are going through those things. Because sooner or later is a proof that you must arrive somewhere. Your tears and expressions of pain do not necessarily reflect unbelief. God taught me this. God taught me. I didn't read it in any book. God himself taught me that the fullness of affliction is the school of is part of the curriculum in the school of the spirit. No matter how anointed you are, I give you a guarantee under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must pass through that school. For you to be an approved man, that badge, you don't buy it, you don't bribe your way through it. The badge is a scar. A scar is a sign that your wound has healed. It's also a sign that there was once a wound. Let no man trouble me. For I bear. I went through it. Don't think I jumped the classes in the spirit. I went through it. God told you that you are going to become a financial prosperity giant. Get set for times of hunger. Let me tell you. A day will come the heavens will shut on purpose. Please hear me. If you like tight fire. Some of us that tight fire brigade fearful tight. Lord watch it all. I'm dropping this thing. If the heaven doesn't. There's an army. Rising up. There's an army. Rising up. Listen. There was a time I gave everything. That I had. Nothing was happening. I've just said you. I could not afford a suit. Let me tell you. And I feared God. I used to go for ministrations. I will never forget one time I went for a ministration. Rain beat me. It was time for the ministration. No car to pick me. Right? The church is, uh, is around. It's is not too far from here. This secondary school. Somewhere there. One church that invited me. It was raining. And they were ringing my phone. They didn't. That time there was no protocol. No nothing. But I had prayed and fasted. And I got up. I said, Lord, no matter what it is everywhere was a pool of water and it was muddy i came out held my bible and i started praying in tongues let me tell you i said i'm going there i was praying Shake i said lord i passed through it with joy a day will come people will hear me 
when I got there to make matters worse, it was Steve Strings that saw me coming and he ran out with an umbrella to help me and bring me in. When I got to the church, they made me to stay outside so that they would arrange a seat for me to sit down. There was no seat. When I got there, they were acting all kinds of drama and they were laughing. And then after everything, they whispered to me that please, I have 15 minutes. I should think of how to patch the time so that I can, I can, I can be snappy about it. It's called the fullness of affliction. Three days fasting. Not, not nonsense. Fasting six to six with proper spiritual exercises to go for. It's called the fullness of affliction. Many of you have grace, but nobody is honoring you. A day will come, they will honor you. Don't run too fast. If you jump classes, life will bring you back. There were times I preached, there was no... After the preaching, come Sam. They said, uh, my brother. Ah! You said you are a young man where? They used to call me Bro Josh then. Not Apostle. Apostle Fire. Bro Josh. Where? where ah, you are a young man. Uh, may God honor you. The way you are going. You will be a bright young man. May God bless you. I just stop a bike outside. Bike! And I climb happily and I go home. No honorarium, no nothing. It was the fullness of affliction. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? It was building me so that my motivation behind the pursuit of God would not be money and honorariums. I didn't have money to buy a shirt. I used to go somewhere. There was one BLW guy. He always used to dry clean his suit and keep for me. So when there's any ministration, I'll run to him and collect. And then one of my friends, I'll go and collect his shoes. That's how I would join everything. My younger sister posted one of the pictures of one of the crusades. And I looked at myself. It was as if I entered inside. I entered inside a tabloid. I was lean to nonsense. I had fasted my life out. Lean until I became... I became like, look, don't just laugh because it's happening to you. And the devil wants to deceive you to stop the process. Pass through it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pass through it. Let people mock you. You're a pretty lady. Nobody's even looking at you. You know that this is not the issue of demons. Demons have been dealt with. When will my change come? God says for others they can go, but you. He said, God, what did I do to you? Many of you have been asking God. God is saying, uh -uh, it's because you are different. Stay behind. The devil can tell you there is an RNG we can do for you. There's one brother that is roaming around looking for a wife. If you are interested, we can, we can come in and pretend as it is. All those, all those things. People use those strategies and they compromise. Hallelujah. They compromise. Say, I will not compromise. Say one more time, I will not compromise. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, all the days of my appointed time. I remember the day I got one proper honorarium. I mean proper, you know what I mean by proper. Something sizable enough for you to smile and say, this looks like the anointing I carry." That day I went back and I was smiling and God told me to sow it. I said, come on, Lord. Abba. And I did gladly. Listen. Part of what some of you receive tonight is not an anointing to go and start a church or to prove to your fellowship that I have arrived. It's going to be a lonely road. It's already happening to some of us. Right? You graduated and you finished school and you are smiling and you drop your you know that everybody can help you but nothing has happened brothers and sisters don't let men look at you and think that it's because you are lazy and foolish there is a dealing of the spirit hallelujah come sweet and come let me tell you come, 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 come quickly. let me tell you something about this lady this lady is a graduate of banking and finance are you seeing this She's a graduate of banking and finance and has been in a dealing with, this, with the spirit. She left Asaba and she's going to be in Zaria for the next, probably the next, maybe close to a year because there is a prophetic dealing of the spirit that is doing in her life. Are you getting me? Certified and approved by her mother. It takes crazy men to carry the anointing of the spirit against popular status quo 
praise the Lord banking and finance with even French again yet for the excellency of that which she believes is locked up in her spirit Let's, let me tell you if you want to be like everybody you will suffer like everybody if you are afraid of being different because of what you just try to be different the accusations are fierce everybody will say we are not doing it like this so don't be a stupid person wisdom is profitable to direct when God is telling you go left all prophets like the ones in the Bible would say go right it's always been right God will say you go left it's a lonely road but it's the furnace of affliction God is speaking to some of us here there are some of us seated here inside and outside you trekked from your house or from your whatever your office or from school to come here and if you don't get boss you are trekking back don't complain see it as the school there is a lecturer talking to you in the spirit pay attention are you hearing what i'm saying there's no money coming from anywhere brother if there is no money relax get a cup of water and drink and smile and know that the world will celebrate you there is nothing happening in my life right now that is surprising me i'm only grateful about it hallelujah sister when god is done with you then you will know why he trained you when you see the kind of man he brings and the responsibility that is waiting you will know why your training was different are you getting what i'm saying who is god speaking to many of us are seated here although we are smiling please play my notes listen we are smiling but there are wounded soldiers sitting looking at me there are many of you this is how you held yourself spiritually to come here is you you pack yourself and the remaining of you and came for koinonia a lady came they brought her in from kaduna gas exploded on her gas cooking gas exploded on her burnt her face burnt her limbs and i was calling this lady and she said when can we come and see you i said this morning i thought they were joking by seven o'clock the whole family they carried themselves and they came they carried the lady when i looked at that lady and she was declaring the faithfulness of god beautiful lady turned to nonsense as a result of gas gas burnt her her feet and she loves god right many of you are touching your face nothing is happening to you <laughs> hallelujah do you know when i sat down and i prayed with this lady while i was praying with her her bond hands she held my hands and as she was crying i could see these ladies you you could sense what she was saying i'm not giving up lord you are faithful when i finished praying she said i should take her she said she wants to walk by herself and she told her mom she said she wants to show the devil she wants to put the devil to shame that's what she said and this girl got up step by step we we're going and she was walking tomorrow you will see this woman raising wheelchairs on crusade grounds when she sees people with wheelchairs the school she passed through created a memory and that memory brings the anointing that's why sometimes you see me sit down during miracle services i've gone through some pain enough in my life we say we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched when was he touched during the furnace of affliction there are many preachers who are so innocent from what is happening to members. They don't know what is happening, so they don't know how to preach. They don't know how to love. They don't know how to be there. I've suffered hunger. There are times that people come to meet me and say, Apostle, as I am like this, I've not eaten. And I look and I say, I understand. No matter what it is, don't give up. They are trying to fight tears in their eyes. I say, don't give up. Don't be afraid. I told you crying is allowed. In the furnace of affliction, crying is allowed cry and wipe your tears and pass through your father looks at you and says you claim there are people here among us one of us here was disowned by his parents completely there are a number of us like that on account of our faith and our, i mean disowned for real they have been on their own there are students here who are sourcing school fees by themselves every one naira comes by faith i speak a word to you don't you think god has rejected you you are passing through what will make you a principality in your time that's how great men are made. i fasted for many days with nothing to break the fast 
but I knew God was faithful. Hallelujah. God. That's why today, if you like, bring, bring, bring a bottle of drink that is one million and give me. I'll drink it, drop it, and continue what I'm doing. Because I've passed through a fullness of affliction that gives me the appreciation to love people at every level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Affliction. It makes you to love people. I went through things in my life I would never want anybody to go through. It creates the true spirit of love. This army are men and women that for now, let me tell you, all over the earth, they are not manifesting yet, brothers and sisters. Many of them are still passing through the fullness of affliction. Some of you, it was your pain and tears that brought you to Koinonia. There is, there is an evil in your family waiting. And you are the one who is trying to emerge. And you who is trying to bring your family into victory and deliverance. The devil is, is making them walk against you. Is that true? Some of you, after this Koinonia, you are going back home. And the spirits have gone in advance to manipulate and orchestrate trouble. Some of you, as you are reaching home, is with a slap, they welcome you. They say you went to the guy's house and be keep quiet. It's not time to defend yourself. Receive the slap or realize that a principality, a reformer, is on his way to rise. Who is God speaking to? A reformer is on his way to rise. There are many of you, people offend you and they do nasty things, but God tells you, get up and go and apologize to them. And you say, God, for what? I didn't. And God says, that's not. Get up. Go and apologize to them. Get up and go and apologize to them. There are times God will carry, tell you to get your best gift and give your worst enemy. It's a fullness of affliction. It's a place of beauty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have the capacity to wax an album. You are about to wax the album and God says you are on your own. You are on your own with that album. He said, instead, carry the money and go and sow it to somebody and remain. Ha. I wish what I was saying were a lie, but it's true. You will pass through it. Some of you are going through it right now. You will pass through it. Brothers and sisters, the first crusade we went for, I think we were, I don't know if we were up to 50 or more than 50. But I preached my life out. We healed those we could heal and we gave Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. There is a prophetic word upon your life. That is why your life is the way it is going. Please listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is a prophetic word. Some of you have written jam for years. Nothing has happened. Your colleagues have gone ahead of you and even graduated. Don't worry. There is a hand that is moving you. You may not see it. You may cry through the night. But I'm speaking to you. There is a hand that is moving you. There is an anointing you will soon encounter in the place of your pain. Where, where you sit down and there is nothing to do, all of a sudden you will find an anointing. There is a squeezing out, a pressing, like what my knee will call it, a breaking of the outer man and a release of the spirit. There is a breaking. You are, you are rising to a realm in the spirit. Sister, continue the prayers continue the bible study don't worry you may look like a fool continue i spoke to a woman who told me that there was a time she was using groundnut oil god is my groundnut oil you know groundnut oil to rub on her body and she said it will be great and it will be better for me one day you want to be great the fullness of affliction is your passport this message may not be pleasant. It's a series we're taking. It's called the Imagines. We're looking at the making of reformers. The mystery of the fullness of affliction. Where men are made. It is the place you will cry your cry till there is no tears to cry again. It is the place you will call for help and heaven is silent. It is the place where your challenges keep multiplying before your face by the day. It comes to a point where as the mountains surround Jerusalem, that's how everything has surrounded you. Where you are praying for something to be better, another thing comes up. The Bible says they kept mounting themselves on Job. First, his animals and everything died. 
lightning came and scattered his building then he was told that he still one report after the other and job just sat on the ground he said naked i came and he began to speak a lot of things let me tell you something the fullness of affliction will get you to a point where you can't talk again your silence becomes your prayer and god hears it because that is the time you will be talking the loudest you sit down you can't open your mouth to say god is unfaithful but to say god is faithful becomes difficult and it's not a sign of unbelief hallelujah that's the point where everything in your life does not seem to work yet you are making spiritual progress yet you are growing spiritually you are suffering from a sickness that you are healing others of you lay hands on them and the power of god gets them free but you have prayed and fasted for months and this thing does not go i bring you a matured message to the body of christ there is a making of reformers across the entire earth these men their dealings look harsh but my brothers let me tell you something do you know how the eagle trains the eaglet to, to fly it picks it up and throws it away and just allows it if you do and it keeps moving around and then eventually it comes back picks it up takes it back and throws it away that's why the eagle does not just fly it soars when other birds are moving around the eaglets when i was an eaglet i went to a lot there are things you go through in life that kills fear somebody looks at you and holds a gun and says i will kill you all of a sudden you remember how many in my life too many things do you know why i don't fear cars jam me one huh you see all the things that have happened in my life Abba. no human being born of a woman can kill me i'm telling you this it's not pride you don't know i told you i've entered car where the armed robbers were shooting I, I, okay no they didn't shoot we we're coming from portacourt right armed robbers i was sitting on c2 luxurious boss you know c2 the one that the, the driver is down you are the one in front there are perils you go through in life that make you mature that's what releases the anointing life has squeezed you so much there's nothing to squeeze there again you are a dead man in christ you have no reputation of yourself and then when you never expect it the light will shine it will never happen when you, Joseph never saw in a vision that by the next day he would be the prime minister. Probably he now said, Oh Lord, let me be in this prison for five more years. Five years is enough for me. Not knowing that that was the last night. He would have been grateful if he was told that he would stay just five more years. But that night, he was at the entrance of another realm, leaving the furnace of affliction forever. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 61. Please, can you play something? Is that all right? Okay. Isaiah 60. 61, sorry. I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to read because this is very, very instructive. We're reading from verse 1. To three are we ready it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he said he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted listen please to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound then he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn in Zion. Let's read verse 3, the first sentence. One to read. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Stop. It says, do weeping and just for a night. There is a system that whenever morning shows up, with that morning there is joy. 
but he never told you how that morning comes but now the prophet is giving us a revelation that there are human vessels anointed to call your night morning he says to appoint the word appoint means to decree it so since we have established that joy will always come with the morning it means there's got to be a system that can call a man's night to become morning so that with that morning his joy comes and he says the spirit of the lord is upon me and has authorized me to call to appoint unto them that morning zion he says to give them he says it as though you are a possessor of it to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning then he says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness are we together he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness that he might be glorified and then he says my people shall never be ashamed my people when it comes to turning their darkness to light they shall never be ashamed why because the spirit of the lord is upon me and part of the many things that he comes to do is to grant capacity to appoint unto men benga was sharing at the welcome note and he said in second chronicles 20 20 he says believe in the lord your god he says so shall you be established he says believe in his prophets and so shall ye prosper it's not human worship it's a system in the kingdom are we together now there is a system in the kingdom that brings men into their glorious destinies we've explored the mysteries of the kingdom again and again we just finished a series on the secrets of the kingdom and please especially for those who are just coming i encourage you to get those series and listen to them with all your heart because the operation of the kingdom is systemic and when you understand the systems of the kingdom then your victory is guaranteed it's not if it will happen is when it will happen hallelujah praise the lord and part of the things i believe god is going to be doing tonight is to appoint unto men seasons let me tell you something with prophecy you see the realm of the spirit does not have time listen please the realm of the spirit does not operate with time are we together events only unfold according to the will of god not just according to the passage of time so the regulator of the activities in the realm of the spirit is the will of god not your clock but when it comes to the earth realm our activities are governed by time whether or not you want time is passing are we together now let me tell you something about prophecy prophecy has the ability listen please it has the ability to tap into the realm of the spirit and find out what would have been your prophetic destiny that has been altered in time are we together and by that grace of prophecy you can take it because there is no past and future in the spirit and so the devil may have messed up your five years but the prophetic is able to pick that five years and make it your tomorrow because there is no time listen listen prophecy does not just reveal it creates it makes possible what would never have been possible so the prophet looks at a woman and says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway the prophetic word created it hallelujah this is the thing about God that truly makes me convinced that all things are possible all things are possible because whatever leaves you in the physical did not live in the spirit and there is still a system that can bring it to become your current day experience so a woman who should have given birth to five children and for whatever reason has been delayed prophecy is able to shift that miracle and make her have triplets and twins are we together now yes do you believe what i'm saying listen if you don't believe this then we're wasting our time because we're talking about the god of all possibilities 
I will die believing him. He is faithful. Hallelujah. Let's look at just one more scripture. John chapter 10 verse 10. Jesus was teaching and he said this. He says, the thief cometh not, King James. The thief cometh not, but for to steal. And to kill. And to destroy. Are we together? But then he says, I am come. I am come. It's a manifesto. Like you say, vote me. I want to do something for you. And then he says, look, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, but I am come, that ye may have life, and to have that life more abundantly. Other versions say to the fullest. The Bible identifies Satan as a thief. Are we together? And what is the character of a thief? Let me tell you. A thief studies an environment and takes advantage of the vulnerability of the people. Second, Second um, Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, I believe, give us Second Corinthians chapter 2. Holy Spirit, help me. Verse 11. There's a scripture that just came to my mind as I was talking too. Thank you. Lest Satan should do what? Take advantage. Are you seeing that? Lest Satan should do what? Take advantage of us. It says for we are not ignorant of his methodology. There is a system with which Satan destroys people. The first system is to study your vulnerability. So he waited until Jesus was hungry and he came through that angle of hunger. Are we together? One of the many blessings of growing in the world is that you close every access point for Satan to be able to take advantage in your life. The area of the kingdom you are not furnished and established in will become the access point of darkness in your life. Are we together? He said, lest Satan should take advantage of us. We are Christians. But because of our inaccurate understanding of the systems of God, Satan can leverage on our ignorance. Satan can leverage on certain spiritual possibilities and buffet our lives. Write it down. I've taught it again and again, but I want to repeat it very quickly. There are only three ways Satan has access to people, especially believers. Only three ways. Number one, covenants. Covenants. This is the system of transgenerational allegiance whether towards God or towards Satan. A covenant creates a platform for access regardless of the individual openness of the people. A territory can have a covenant with God to find expression at all times. When David was dedicating the temple, he stood up and said, Oh Lord, whoever faces this temple in Jerusalem and prays unto you, we pray is a covenant that you hearken to them. So when Daniel was about to be destroyed, when they signed a law, the Bible says he opened his window towards Jerusalem, remembering the covenant. Are we together? And the Bible says he prayed. Covenants. They are fraternities that we come into, whether with God or with demon spirits, that authorize certain levels of activities in lives, in families, and in territories. Please pay attention. I'm building a conviction in us so that we'll pray. A covenant is so powerful because in a covenant, your, your individual refusal or acceptance does not necessarily change things ordinarily. Are we together? I give you an instance. They did not consult with you to change fuel price because there is a covenant. By birth, you are a Nigerian. Are we together? So whatever happens to this country, as an individual, you can exempt yourself. But as a territory, we are under a common challenge. Are we together? When Jesus saw somebody who was born blind, his disciples asked a question. He said, who sinned that this man was born blind? He said, him or his father. In other words, there was something in the teaching of Jesus to them that had taught them that there can be things that transcend a generation. Are we together? And transcend a territory. 
Now, there are several people in a bid to bring balance to the exaggerated um, activities of demon spirits. We have deceived people into believing that covenants do not have anything. And so we have people jumping and saying, no way. But there are 11 people in a family. None of them is giving birth. Yet, they, are, they do not want to admit that there is something wrong. Covenants are powerful covenants are respected in the realm of the spirit there is a law that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins so the word had to become a lamb and go through that condition for mankind to be saved there are families born again but they do not understand the systems of god your personal salvation does not affect your territory. It takes an operation of the kingdom for that reality to be established. It is not negating what Christ has done. The confusion here usually has come from an accurate or an inaccurate understanding of the prophetic speakings of God and the experiential manifestation. Follow me please. When God speaks, he speaks from the realm of his possibilities and he's prophetic in his communications. He called things that be not as though they are are we together but when it comes to the experiential manifestation of the same there is a partnership from this earth realm to make it real in the eyes of god no one should go to hell is that true because the price has been paid are there still people dying and going to hell today yes does that mean the work of salvation is is is, is um is a failure no the people have not opened up their will there are many of us today by the grace of god who will be healed but scripture was not just written this night it's been written before our forefathers were born however tonight there is a principle we are going to engage in that will make it become real are we together now yeah listen sickness should give us an understanding that covenants are real if you are a christian and you are tongue talking and you can still fall sick that means you are a christian and you can still be buffeted by demons there is a spiritual logic to this it is not insulting your salvation it is to help you understand that there is there is there is an understanding that will give you freedom please i want you to pay attention to this many individuals especially those who love god are victims of fraternities the goal of covenants is to create transgenerational allegiance whether to god or to the devil the missionaries came and brought the gospel of salvation but they did not bring the gospel of the kingdom so malaria killed them you call it malaria we know what killed them are we together because there are systems in the kingdom so you can be born again your eternal salvation can be secured but then because we do not understand the operations of the word, we can just pretend and say everything is alright. Faith is not foolishness. The end of faith is a manifestation. If you are trying, trying and nothing is happening, I think it's, it's, very, it's very humble to open up yourself and say, look, I see patterns. The clearest proof of an existence of covenants is patterns. Similarity of happenings regardless of the individuals. They rob your brother in a quiet bomb. Your sister is minding herself in Benway. They rob her too. Two of them were not discussing it. Because you see, covenants give access to certain operations of, of spiritual beings. Whether God or Satan. I can enter a covenant of righteousness with my family that can grant God access. Even someone who is an unbeliever can come under the corporate covering of that covenant. That's what brought people out of Egypt. So long as there was blood, whether the individuals believed or not, for as long as their door, a representative of the people had blood, the angel of death passed. Covenants. I have seen this. I saw it in my own life. I saw it in my own family. I've seen this in the life of pastors. I've seen this in the life of sincere people. Number two, ignorance. The second access point is a lest Satan should take an advantage of us. On the strength of our ignorance in this area, ignorance. Ignorance. Incomplete understanding of the principles of the word. 
or no understanding completely both of them in the spirit is called ignorance whether you know the principle or you know part of it is still ignorance because you are only having um, the Bible says you will arise and you will shine Isaiah 60 verse 1 not because you are tired of sitting but it says your light is come it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has the power to cause you to arise and shine ignorance that's why we spent three weeks expounding on the mysteries of the kingdom to help us understand the systems of God listen the journey of a believer starts with Christ it does not start with principles it starts with an encounter of the person Christ when you begin to study principles outside of an, the encounter of Christ you will get into Scientology and witchcraft and mysticism and spiritism you must encounter the object of your encounter is the person Jesus are we together from that standpoint of encounter he reveals himself to you he brings you to a point of intimacy and your reward for intimacy is power and that power is divided into two one power that comes from the understanding of the systems of God and another dimension of power that comes as a reward for intimacy so there are two dimensions of the operations of God's power. Number one is the dimension of his power that is programmed into his laws. By believing those laws, the power is released. Whether you are praying or not. Seed time and harvest is an example of such laws. You engage it and the power of God is released. Are we together? Yeah. But there are certain dimensions of power that will only be released on the strength of intimacy so it is from that standpoint of encounter you begin to explore the systems of god the systems of god defines his way of operation and the moment you comprehend that then you will truly access power ignorance you can be born again and be ignorant number three disobedience the last access point of satan is disobedient willful refusal to comply with God's principles willful refusal that's disobedience you're not doing it out of ignorance the Bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete not when you start when it's complete Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 says and it shall come to pass right that if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them it shall come to pass if thou will diligently Joshua verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 8 right the Lord was speaking to Joshua and then he says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all all not some observe to do right then he says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success it's very important obedience 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 is not just hearing what God has said obedience is doing what God has said in John chapter 2 when the servants came to Mary she said whatsoever he tells you to do he said do it hallelujah Paul the Apostle was encouraging the, the early church and he said now that ye know these things in fact it wasn't just Paul I think it was Jesus himself he says, now that you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Now that you know, happy are ye if you do them. These, brothers and sisters, as mysterious as Satan looks, this is the only way he can find expression. His possibilities are finite. They are not infinite. Number one is covenants. The strongest access point to Satan or of satan into people's lives and then number two we have ignorance and number three disobedience and that's why we are gathered here tonight 
that God will grant us grace to take advantage of the provisions that have come in Christ and end this this buffeting of darkness over our lives and destinies and I pray that it will be someone's testimony tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for you from the depth of my heart that as God begins to touch people he will touch you and end this captivity in your life once and for all is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am listen I want you tonight to believe God do not come to God carelessly listen the Bible describes the kind of attitude we must have when we come to God Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him he said for he that cometh unto God must come believing must believe that he is that means he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so every time you approach God you don't come to try let me find out whether God can touch this cancer let me find out whether God can end my captivity no you come to him believing say I'm a believer so tonight I want you to approach the mighty God knowing that he's able to do all things believe me you have your requests you have your needs take your eyes away from that infirmity and believe in God it does not look it can be within the twinkling of an eye and God will change your story it doesn't take him time God is not a carpenter he doesn't build by nailing things he builds by speaking are we together now he called darkness light and it became light I really believe God and I came here tonight trusting that God will touch us it's going to be a very quick walk that's why I'm taking out the time to speak to us very quickly let me just take the altar call now look up please let that be the first miracle tonight let's take the altar call so that as we begin to move and just flow we'll just move in one single sweep there's a lot to do tonight and we want to save time so that we can finish on time I told you that there are three access points of Satan one covenants two ignorance three disobedience are we together John chapter 3 from verse 16 says for God so loved the world he said that he gave his one and only begotten son who is no longer his one and only but the first begotten of we because he has called many of us into glory are we together then it says that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life the thing I love about the faith life is that you are never forced to do anything your response in the kingdom is always a product of revelation and your willingness if you are willing and obedient then you will eat the good of the land there are people seated here right from praise and worship there are so many listening to me the first overflow and all the overflows around there are so many connecting uh, you know on our social media platforms and you're hearing my voice right now and the holy spirit is telling you the man of god is talking to you the first miracle that can happen to you tonight is the miracle of ending the mismanagement of your life by trying to run it your own way are we together that you hand over your life when you come to jesus you don't just come and accept him in your heart you take your heart and say lord i give you everything not i give you my spiritual life i hand over my entire life to you everything i've been through use it for your glory lord 
I offer my life to you everything that's true repentance that as you come here you are not just coming because you are feeling guilty you are coming here sincerely saying I'm tired of mismanaging my life there's got to be more than this there's got to be more than living my life the way I want I must come under authority and I know there are so many people inside and outside hearing my voice some of you have never made this decision to make Jesus Lord of your life. You've made a decision to go to church. You've made a decision to join a religion called Christianity. But you have not made a true decision to surrender everything. And there are people, there's another category I'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time. There are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision. But the cares of this life, the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you. And right now, you know that as it is right now, as it is right now, you cannot say things are all right between you and God. You've backslidden, you've, you've turned away. But the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, it says, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then it says, then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then will heal their land. Forgiveness will always follow healing. Are we together? I'm going to make an altar call right now. Any of the overflows outside, inside here, very fast, I'll count one to ten. Listen, there are people the Holy Ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus. You're saying, Lord, things are happening in my family. I do not even know the name of what is going in my family. The first key is to surrender your all. To sacrifice everything before his throne. And say, Lord, I'm not just coming to receive healing. I'm coming to start a new life. It's called Zoe, God's very life. Not another kind, the very life of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before I make the altar call, I want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute, intercede for those who are about to come and say, Lord, no power will stop them from coming. No power will stop them from coming. We believe in the salvation of souls. This is not a cinema where we are watching football. This is a place where God is changing lives and destinies. Pray. As you are praying for many of you, the Lord is going to be speaking to you right now. There are so many outside in all the overflows. It's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say, return home. He's calling you. He's calling you. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to count one to ten. Wherever you are, please, I'd like us to begin to celebrate them. Outside, inside, don't wait for others. You are returning to Christ and you are making this decision for the first time. Leave your seat and make your way quickly. One, we'll count one to ten. Don't wait for anybody. God bless you. They are coming. Two, please clear the way for them outside. Don't let no friends stop you. Jesus is calling you. No, no, no. You are, doing, you are doing a very noble thing. Don't let any friend, please encourage them outside. If you came with anyone, don't stop them from coming out. God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend. It's, it's, it's an entirely, um, it's a personal affair. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia is a sacrifice of your applause to motivate them and encourage them. Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. 
I believe in you. Hallelujah. The Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God. In fact, the Lord is showing me at least three ladies. You've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what I have done. Will the Lord really, really open up himself to me? And the Lord is saying you should make your way to the front. Clear the way for them, please. Clear the way. I don't care whether you are a pastor, you are a prophet. Make your way to the front. This is serious business. I believe there are still people outside in the overflows, the first, the second overflow and across the road. Please make your way to the front. We are going to wait for you. One more minute, we are going to wait for you. We are going to wait for you. Please don't play games with God tonight. This is your destiny. He wants to bless you. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, thoughts of peace, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. I believe in you. I believe in you. Let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them. Jesus, Son of God, I believe Hallelujah. I sincerely want to appreciate us, young and old. We are all here to receive Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. If I, if I give you a new phone, you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed. You accept it with gratitude. Salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight. Are we together? And so I want you to be very proud of what you are doing. Whether you are being restored or you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Just make sure you are not reciting a poem. Make sure this is from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me. I'm just guiding you. But the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the son of God I believe that he died for me I believe that he rose again for my justification tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord I hand over my life and my destiny to your care and I ask that you be my Lord, my God, my King forever. From today, the hold of sin, the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end. This is a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, you see these hands lifted. They have made genuine sincere commitments i pray that the spirit of god that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction and i pray in the name of jesus that from tonight let there be a new beginning in the name of jesus christ let there be a new beginning for every one of us no going back to the world no going back to the flesh by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to all of you. This is the best decision you would have made in your entire life. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow. Okay, this way, we're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you. There'll be a group of people to have your names, your details, and we'll follow you up. They'll be very brief so that you come back and join us. Um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get up to the ministrations right away. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Let's honor them. Koinonia, bless them. Bless them. Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We are about to pray for a few minutes.
and I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, when we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. It says, call unto me and I will answer. Call unto me and I will answer. It says, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me. You see, prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much I do not know and there is so much I cannot do. Are we together? Prayer is a sign of humility. When you call on God to step into your life, it is because you acknowledge that he is able. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I know you are able. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, please. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! He is the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare. That every force tying down my life, tying down my destiny, tying down my progress, you come under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Oh, come on, Koinonia, are you praying? Every force. Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death. But he says, I advise you, choose life so that you and your family will live. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus. I make a decision. Tonight, I make a choice. Tonight, that 
that I must leave this place free. I'd like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here and say, I am determined. I make a decision. 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 Are you praying? Shabara Katalaba. Mambra Katalakata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. I make a decision. I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life, to keep my family limited in life, tonight I declare that this is my night of victory lift your voice and cry 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 unto the God of your salvation They must be broken. They must be broken. I contend. I contend by faith. I contend. I contend by faith. hallelujah hallelujah the bible says and abraham was old and well stricken in age and god had blessed him in all things i'd like you to pray and say every area that is not working say it every area in my life that is not producing results to not you come under the influence of the anointing Lift your voice and begin to pray. Your finances may not be working. Your spiritual life may be working. you are praying your to a new dimension of God. Shaba karada bala da 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 ba. Kali, we declare your majesty. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to the instruction the Lord is giving me. Please listen. Let's walk together, guys. Please, let's walk together. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. We are going to shout three times. Listen. Hallelujah. Because what I see in the realm of the spirit is like I'm standing on top of this building and I'm seeing like a pot boiling but it's about to tilt. That's what I'm saying. And the Lord is telling me that at the third shout, we are going to shout once, shout two. By the third shout, listen, the first thing that will happen by the time we take that third shout, there will be such an explosion of the power of God, a mighty deliverance anointing. And that's how we're going to start off tonight. Are we together? It's called a healer. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that crumbles walls. When they went round the walls of Jericho, they shouted. The instrumentalists, everybody together. Hallelujah. Just be stupid enough to obey this instruction. And watch the God of wonders do mighty things in your life. You are shouting pain away. You are shouting sickness away. You are shouting captivity away. Hallelujah. My goodness, I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong in this place. Mighty, 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 mighty. I'm going to count three. When I count three, listen, I want you to shout from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. And then the second time we are going to shout. Listen, as surely as the God of heaven lives, by the third shout, in the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me, the wonders that will happen in your life, by this third shout is a mystery brothers and sisters how God operates are you ready one two three hey hallelujah hallelujah please all those under the anointing just bring them out but really it's from the third time are you ready for number two we're shouting powers out of men's destinies we're shouting thrones dominions that have tied down the lives of men are you ready one two three Hallelujah. Now be sensitive. Oh, I feel it on me. Here it comes. That grace. That unction. That grace. That unction. By the third shout, hear me. Angels will begin to move in dramatic ways. There will be an eruption of the power of God inside and outside. Are you ready? I make a decree in the realm of the spirit and i pray according to the word of the lord as we make this shout i command thrones i command dominions i command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the lord jesus are you ready now one two three Go ahead. Go ahead. Get Bring them out. Shake up Mighty things happening to men already. I tell you, 
is like volcano. That's what I see in the spirit. Falling on people. Falling on people. You rebe. your hands there are 21 people I see prophetic mantles the mantle of the prophetic the mantle of the prophetic 21 people that's what I see 21 people right now oh God in the name of Jesus wherever they are at the count of three let that mantle fall on them 21 one two three take it Take it, take it, new wine, take it, prophetic mantle, prophetic mantle, prophetic mantle, I call it salt, I call it salt. Mantles, 21 people stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I stand under this apostolic anointing. I activate it. the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit so many people having their hands tied with chains that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit chains this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone I want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside I like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open. Are you ready? I command the chains be broken now. 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 There's a family God is liberating. A whole family. They are here. I'm seeing God touch them. Right now. Giving them miracles. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Send a word that will bring me hope. Send a word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. 
we have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakotoparatoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you enter transport and you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing you in a car and you came and I'm seeing you praying and asking God to visit you and visit your family is that why you are here yes. your family you were saying if only you come here god will visit your family and god is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna and her family in the name of the lord jesus christ i break that curse over your family by the power of the holy ghost it lives forever lift your hands and give jesus praise lift your hands and give jesus praise lift your hands and give jesus praise look at me Please call the lady again. My dear, where is your mother? Uh, what's she doing? Uh, she's a civil servant. She's a civil servant. We have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness. She's complaining of pains in her body. She went to the hospital. Uh, she may not have told you. She went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back. Yes. Is that true? Yes. That's what the doctor said that she's having problem with her back. Yes. This is witchcraft. It's not just pain like that. Your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes. Her yes. back will start paining yes. her. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for mama right now wherever she is. Let there be a supernatural miracle for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Madam, can I talk to you please? Yes, that madam that one with um, yes please make sure you are praying God is touching people we just want to be fast I wish we had time no 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 you don't have to kneel down please stand up where are you coming from madam from Jigawa Jigawa state Jigawa state yes. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying and I'm wondering why are you going through all of this uh, some of them I may not be able to say it here but you were invited here I'm with my sister. that's what I'm my saying where is she I'm seeing two people where is the sister come come and stand hold on I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people. Yes. There are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you. Where are they? they, are, they are. Where are they? Two other people. Where are they? Please come and stand. I want to announce to you, all of you, that God will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you please i want you to believe i want you to believe me the things i see i may not be able to tell you right now because um one of you has a problem with your husband i don't want to go into hold on i should i talk do you want me to talk calm down let me talk to you you cannot let me talk madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance you believe what i'm saying you love god you are a sincere woman but your husband needs deliverance. Huh? Where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Huh? Like I may vomit from drunkenness. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. 
that's why I asked her, how do I know you are wearing something? I'm seeing you praying for her. In fact, even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman and bless her. I'm hearing your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me and he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes, and the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about, yes, sir. tell me the truth. Now don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. is showing me a lady you left the hospital this morning your mother is in the hospital it's part of the reasons why you came here please who is that your mother you left her in the hospital and you came here please when you get that person let me pray for her because God wants to do a miracle I want to pray for you the Bible says what God has joined let no man put asunder God did not join you on any spirit entity and he's going to deliver you in the name of Jesus be free let her go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance his own money finishes on friend and friends and beer is that true is that true, it's true. because I'm seeing him not only drink but buy him for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman no. but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from Katsina. There is a woman from Katsina. A woman from Katsina. That's what I'm seeing. A woman, you are outside. You didn't cover your hair. You are from Katsina. Where is that person? Is there someone like that, please? Where is that person? Why are you clapping? Where is the person? Please come. From Katsina. Look at me. Stand up, stand up, madam. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Look at me. The Lord is saying I should quote a scripture for you. When the Lord again shall turn your captivity, He says you'll be like them that day. Madam, you have cried enough in this miracle service. The God of heaven is about to wipe your tears. Mary. Mary. Who is Mary? Mary. Mary. I know there are many Marys. Hold on, please. Hold on. Let me call the Mary. The Mary is in this row. Mary, you are seated here. No, 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 no. At the back, you are wearing a dark cloth. Right here. You didn't cover your head. The Mary is in. No, like, I don't know if it's a dark cloth. Like, it has flower. It's a gown. It's a gown. Straight down. Gown, not gown with skirt. Is there someone like that? Mary, this row. The angel of the Lord is said, is it a gown or someone? I'm seeing something with flower. Is there someone like that? Please find out. Mary, I need to talk to that person. I need to talk to that person. You're the one? Okay. Well, come, I'll talk to you. Madam, where are you from? I'm from Akwaibo. You are from Akwaibo? I'm in Katsina. I know. 
Are you married? Yes. Where is your husband? I have to pray for you. God wants to give you victory. My goodness, lift your hands. I'm telling you, I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels. Watch what happens in the congregation right now. Angels, 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 angels bringing impartation to people. I just saw like a wind in the spirit. Angels cutting away things. That's what I'm seeing. Angels cutting away things from people. They are removing things in people's bodies. That's what I see. Like a slimy substance leaving people. This is breakthrough, breakthrough. God is giving people breakthrough. Hallelujah. Ma, let me pray for you. What do you do, ma? Hallelujah. Hold on. I'm looking at this woman. Don't be afraid. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at you. Where is Kasham? I'm looking at you, ma. And I'm seeing her name on your head. And I was wondering, and the Lord, no, 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 no. Hold on. Come, come. I'm looking at this woman and, and I'm seeing the name of this lady, Kasham, on her head. And I thought your name is Kasham, but the Lord told me it's not Kasham. The, what she's practicing is what you are now. What, what are you doing? I'm a nurse. What are you doing? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That's what God is telling me. Because I'm looking at you and I saw her name written on your head. And the Lord said I should call her and make... See, this is not diabolic. Hosea chapter 12. It says, I have spoken to you by the prophet. I have multiplied visions. He said, I have spoken to you in similitudes. This is not jamboree. We have a lot of things to do. God is locating people and when he's doing it for one, he's doing it for many people. Time will not allow for everybody to be called, but I just want you to believe. Believe in what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's, that's, the, that's the only reason why you are here. Ma, I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing the Lord promoting you and lifting you. You believe that? If God grants grace, you will return and testify. Hold my hands, ma. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the God of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of Jesus. Ma, I want to pray for you. Where are you from, please? I'm from Anambra, but I'm from Jigawa. I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. You are a nurse too. Yes. I want to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body. And this is not a nice, this is not something I will even say. The devil wants to put it in your body, but will take authority over it right now. Please hold my hands, man. In the name of Jesus, Lord, he will fortify her. I, I command that spirit to leave you right now. Out! The devil wants to put sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ma, look at me. The pain is living and you are going free. You have cried. I have I'm seeing a woman who has cried, but God is stepping in. Hold my hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, the grace that makes things happen. May that grace bring this woman out of pain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Come stand here. I want to pray. There's bad luck in your family. Huh? Serious bad luck. Where's your father? Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka, I'm hearing the name of someone, Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle for you. Let there be a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus, Emeka, the Lord is ministering to me. I'm hearing the name of someone, Emeka. The Lord is giving you a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, Emeka, you are outside. I'm seeing two Emeka coming. i tell you, I see like a screen. One, you have beard. One, you are wearing white. Hello, King. You reign. You reign. You reign. Hello. Hallelujah. 
I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus and the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business, but the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not, I'm, we're not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon your life right now. Step into a new level of grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power, it's not by might. I bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing. Just carry her like that and bring her to me. There is a word. No, it's inside here. It's not outside. Right here. Carry her like that and bring her. It's a message. Just carry her like that and bring her. This is what I see in the realm of the spirit. As she's lying down like this, that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. And I'm hearing Ezekiel 2 verse 2. It says, and the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet. The Lord is bringing not just deliverance to you and your family, but the Lord is bringing, I'm hearing the word restoration. And the Lord is saying, I should prophesy to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It comes upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please bring this lady for me. Just, just carry her carefully if she can. Please lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, visit me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break every hole you have with her life. In the name of Jesus, I'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the Lord is saying he's removing that crown. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. This is a lady who loves God, but I see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and I'm seeing the lady with a crown and the Lord is taking it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command freedom right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command freedom right now. Be free. Go! Let her go now. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Before we pray for the sick, there's something the Lord is showing me. Please, I'd like you to lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your hands. The power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing deliverance in families. This is not just you. You are standing for your loved ones. I'm seeing mighty deliverance is happening in families. And the Lord is saying, one more time, we should shout that name, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As we shout Jesus, I'd like you to shout all your heart. At the count of three. The moment you do that, I see deliverance coming to families. And what they could not do in many years will be done within one month. What they could not do in many years will be done within one month. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Right now. Deliverance. 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 Shakataba. Families. I command it. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Deliverance. What could not be done in 10 years. In 10 years. It will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. 
every door stopping me from entering the next level right now i command that door broken lift your voice and begin to pray pray yourself to the next dimension doors are opening pray inside and outside doors are opening Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit, but you see, the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men. Just like this, you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life. Just like this. There are chains that tie men. There are chains that hold down destinies. There are chains. Please bring this lady for me. Yes, this lady. Just this very lady, just bring her. I keep the chains falling. Hey, I keep the chains, I keep the chains. I keep the chains, I keep the chains. I keep the chains, I keep the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is coming for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in, in the name of Jesus. Hey, to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Jimmy, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's restoring to you the spirit of prophecy. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. He's restoring to you. I saw an eagle fly and it entered you. And the Lord is saying, he's restoring the spirit of prophecy. 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 Hallelujah. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing people carry load and God is saying I should bring down that load. Lift your hands. Lord, where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them? Right now, at the count of three, let that load come off you. Right now, one, two, three. Right now, right now, right now. Anyone carrying any load, kapra takata, shakata tata. Every load, every load, every load, every load, every load, every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God must leave you must leave you must leave you must leave you hallelujah hallelujah before we are going to be very fast hallelujah I was walking and the Lord said I should go back praise the Lord please don't mind me just allow me to do what the Lord is saying and the Lord is saying I should walk right here outside right and go outside please hear me and the lord is saying as i walk for every road that i pass if there is a spirit holding your destiny it must leave you please believe me 
I lift my hands right now. Right now, as I'm passing, the anointing of the Spirit is touching people, destroying yokes, destroying yokes, destroying yokes right now, destroying yokes from my left and my right, destroying yokes, any spirit, tying down any man's destiny. Right now, 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 right now. Right now, right now, right now, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, now listen to me, those outside, don't be afraid it will not rain, but watch this, lift your hands, I'm going to walk this way, and the power of the Holy Ghost you are enduring this rain as I walk through any spirit tie your life must give way right now are you ready right now right now right now right now right now I release everybody from bondage 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 right now I stretch my hands I stretch my hands I stretch my hands right now I stretch my hands I stand by an anointing as I pass your robe. Any devil tying you will let you go right now. As I pass your robe, as I as I as I pass your robe, as I pass your robe now, right? responsible for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same I came out to join you hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around. We are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. As many who can come in, don't worry. Just push them in. I know it will be a bit stuffy, but push as many people everywhere and let's pray. We have to hurry up. Just push them as many. There are some who may not be able to do much, but then we are praying. We are praying. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every power holding me Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every power holding my breakthrough tonight, your time is up. Go, 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 go. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Every power, every force. Hallelujah. Now, hold on. I know that there are so many people coming in. Just give them room to come in. Just make every adjustment. Not all may be able to come in. But it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. We want to pray for the sick now. Now, please be careful so we don't have people marching on people. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who came trusting God for healing, now is your time. Please walk with the protocol, walk with the ushers. I'm going to ask you to come out and stand here. Don't match the people in front. While they are doing that, ushers, begin to pass your prayer request. Begin to pass your prayer request.
There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Power to break every chain. Break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing. A strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain. 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 Hallelujah. Now we're going to minister to the sick. Please hear me. No matter what the situation is, as you stand right here, I want you to believe God for healing. You've heard the testimonies of people. You've seen the things that God is doing in this place. Don't make the place rowdy. Just be orderly as we pray for you. Just a touch and you return back we may not have the time to take testimonies hallelujah please say to me you will join me where's pastor jakes i'm glad to have them around and they'll make this work easy the anointed people as we pray for you i want you to believe god for healing the moment you are prayed for as you walk back to your seat do what you couldn't do before don't just sit down and hope you are healed the bible says they came to hear and to be healed they came to hear and to be healed. Everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go. Every incurable disease. Go ahead and pray. Every incurable disease. You are living. Hallelujah. Worship team, you help us while we minister Pastor Jakes me please we are going to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus I want you to believe in the God that heals in the name of Jesus thank you Heavenly Father make sure you are praying in tongues don't just be whiling away time drop your prayer request and be praying pray in the spirit and say Lord you are going to visit me as a God of wonders. Hallelujah. Our time is spent, but I want you to make sure that you participate. We are going to pray on this right now. And then afterwards, um, I'm going to prophesy over our lives. Then we'll take a few announcements and we'll be done. I want you to maximize the night so that you don't go back and return the same. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, I want, if you can rise, please rise. Those on, under the anointing, that's all right. And then mothers with children, that's all right. But the rest of us, please, let's rise and take this very seriously. We're going to be praying right now. When Pastor Jakes and Ejimi are done, they can come and join us. We'll pray. Pastor Godwin, 
where are you please can you come and join us um, we're going to pray I'd like you to stretch your hands here and in one minute pray like your life depends on it and say the same way I have dropped this that's how I've dropped every challenge in my life I'd like you to pray please pray Koinonia open your mouth inside outside online please join us we're going to lay our hands prophetically on this request as we lay our hands on them we are releasing the power of God to every home to every territory in the name of the Lord Jesus make sure you pray from the depth of your heart father we agree with you we agree with you all kinds of miracles impossible situations make sure you are praying there is a God that answers prayers. Let fire fall on this request, O God. Shakata prakata kata kata. Rekata kata 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 bosh. Maprakata prosoto bosh. Elekata prakata pere koto soprata kata bala daba. Manta shata taka taka rada bala daba. Pray, prophesy. We are speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, O God. Visit individuals, visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. In Dalukos, Itadada, they looked unto you and they were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Shame is taken away totally and completely. Ah, the embargo is lifted. Ah, I hear God saying, Affliction shall not arise again the second time. Allah, do taka boba baba shota inga dua ika tula katia mama makada dusa ika deta baba inka. It is done. It is done, says the Spirit of God. It is done. Oh, glory be to God. Go ahead and rejoice and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Please lift your hands. And receive the prophecy. This is where God is going to be changing lives. Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service. Take it high, guys. Inside, outside. This is where I want you to believe. You will rise in His name. I don't know. You reign. You will rise in Your name. Hallelujah. Three weeks ago, I had a very serious encounter with God. 
And the Lord told me something. He said, I have put my word in your mouth. As you speak it, I will make it happen. That's what the Lord told me. Please, I want you to believe it. Oh, blessed is she that believes. Don't sit down and doubt and waste your time. There is a spiritual dimension to life. It's not just, I have taught you principles. Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray every gate that must be opened right now I speak to you Efata be open now 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 that chain tying any man's destiny tying the speed of your progress you are moving but you are not making impact right now I release upon you an auction for speed an auction take it an auction for speed an auction for speed the Bible says and the hand of the Lord please help them the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah he gathered his loins and ran on barefoot he overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel I don't know what you have done from January to now but I prophesy from now till the end of June do what you have not done in five years shake it, 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 it. Do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Hallelujah. Jacob dug a well and they covered it. They dug another one. They covered it. They dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth. They said God has given us our space where you have been begging for relevance it's like there is no place for you in life it's like there is no place I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle take your place in life take your place in destiny take your place in ministry take your place in destiny take your place in ministry Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever has covered your glory whatever has covered your glory I stand tonight I invoke the powers of the heavens and I command let your glory be released now be released now be released now anyone here called jobless between now and the next two months I don't care what is the reason but I pray as surely as the God of heaven lives we give you a job here now we give you a job here now we give you a job here now it says to appoint unto them that morning Zion listen there are some of us you are making progress but no help in your life you fight for everything by yourself you pay for everything by yourself when you are in trouble there's nobody to speak for you at the gate where are your helpers who stopped them from entering your life who said it must be this hard I go down on my knees I call your helpers by prophecy in the name of Jesus from the north to the south, to the east, to the west, from the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, from the north, to the south, to the east, to the west.
Christ receive of their ministry. Listen, let me tell you, there is nothing more tragic as having no helper. No man can stand alone. You need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny. You need men to endorse you and say, help him. You can't have to explain yourself to everybody. Who is speaking for you? I pray again. Whoever must appear in your life from now till June, business helpers, financial helpers, marital helpers, career helpers, I call you forth. I call you forth. Hallelujah. Listen, lift your hands. There are some of you, your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where God will show you secrets. It made your life easy till something shuts you from visions and dreams. I pray. Every dead dream life, every dead manifestation of visions like a mantle receive restoration now restoration of dreams prophetic dreams visions prophetic vision hallelujah please stretch your hands towards me please stretch your hands towards me the hands of a man represents your responsibility represents your wisdom represents your agency for bread i pray for you whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized isaiah 48 verse 17 i am the lord that teaches thy hands to profit i pray the grace that makes your hand productive Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. The grace that makes your hand multiply. Take it now. Everything called barren in your destiny. Physical barrenness. Spiritual barrenness academic barrenness career barrenness right now I cause the spirit of barrenness from its root and I command be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah lift your hands in the next one minute I want us to pray because everyone will receive something listen listen what we're all receiving is an upgrade of grace listen he said grace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied the grace upon a man's life can multiply should multiply must multiply there are three things that happen to you when God lifts you. One, he multiplies your grace. Two, he adds to your responsibility. Three, he increases your territory of influence, both spiritually and physically. I pray for you. Lift your hands. Some of us, you have not backslidden, but you have not risen beyond certain levels. You have stayed there at a level. Everything that is alive grows. Please, I want you to receive. I told you this meeting will have impartations. The impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling. Impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit. Hallelujah. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. He said, to the end that he be established. I pray for you. Lift your hands. Every grace that is dormant in your life every grace that is useful 
but it has stayed at a level and it's made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office I pray for you may that grace be upgraded now shake it receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power fire power fire fire prayer fire what fire prayer fire what fire an upgrade of supernatural wisdom an upgrade of access access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far i pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called hefziba and Pula, a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cut short breakthroughs i pray for you in the name of jesus i pray the blessing that was prophesied he said to jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may that prayer be answered let me say it again whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise I said may that prayer be answered listen the Bible says in five things the Lord will deliver you he said yes six he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men it was a revelation that was given Job that men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men I pray for you whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life I release you right now I release you right now I release you right now hallelujah the kind of finances your hands has not touched I pray for you between now and the end of this month may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes anyone here marked for death that death is eyeing you waiting for the day you will get on the road waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life i pray for you in the name of jesus we forbid the earth from receiving your body we forbid the earth from receiving your body there are five elements i'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth five elements all through scripture the supernatural cannot manifest on earth 
without the instrumentality of these five elements number one is light god is light the entrance of thy word give it light let there be light number two water the fish and the birds of the end genesis came out of water water represents abundance number three fire hallelujah it's a mysterious instrument not threatened by any other element yet refines every other number four wind the mystery of sound the mystery that takes sounds and realities he said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound that sound came back in acts chapter 2 a sound hallelujah and the last element is the earth the prophet said "O oh earth hear you the word of the lord he said for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return hear me i want to pray just one deep mystery for you the earth is a universal point of contact every man makes contact with it for you to be alive you must make contact with the earth your feet must touch the ground your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching no 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 no. it's not amen it's a mystery the office where you are to be employed is on this ground it's not in the air hear me please the bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth and the prophet said oh earth you are a living thing you are not just stones hallelujah are we together hmm. it says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones i pray for you whoever wants to disfavor you just like the stars fought for deborah may the earth fight for you May the earth fight for you. Quarter to shame. May a mystery manifest that you don't understand to bail you out. Listen. When men say let's see what will become of him. I pray a mystery. My goodness. Another way. May God bring another mystery. And deliver you. In the name of Jesus. The heat and the turmoil in Nigeria. We love our nation. We pray for them. And we pray sincerely. Out of a sense of nationhood. But I pray for you. The mystery of exemption. That can exempt a man. It says for when men say there is a casting down. For you you will say there is a lifting up. I prophesy a lifting up. Regardless of the recession. This is still your year of multiplied grace. And growth. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give God thanks. Thank Him sincerely. Lord, we thank you for your word. Listen, I want you to go back realizing what happened to you. Don't be like the man who looks at himself at the mirror and leaves and forgets. These prophecies have come upon you like a mantle. You enforce them in the place of prayer. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashkana kata branda kete kotos. Kete branda kata bakotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.